So thanks for congratulating me on the award success of The Yield. Um, it's always great to be shortlisted um, and to win a prize, especially um, as big as the New South Wales Premiers. Um, so it's great. And it's great for the whole book industry, but I think for the writer, there's no real distinction between the shortlist and winning, except for, of course, um, the money, which is always great. Um, no, but it's been great, and it gives a book, you know, a second or third um, wind and a new readership, so that's always great. So the book took over 10 years to finish, but that doesn't n necessarily mean that I was writing the book and only writing that book over that decade. It means it sat with me and I was trying to figure out how to write the story, how to write the story that would, how to write it in a way that would convince the reader that the truths that I was trying to tell um, would, be, would be truths for them. How to, how to write in a convincing way and also, you know, trying to put together quite complex timelines. So I guess that's why it took so long is because I was just constantly trying to figure it out. It took a long time. There was a long research period for this book, especially since I was dealing with um, you know, sensitive material, uh, Aboriginal intellectual property, um, sensitive historical facts, um, and then also because it's written in the style of a dictionary, so I wanted it to be not only using the dictionary to tell a narrative story, um, and to move the story along, but also literate with um, facts and information about um, plants and animals and techniques in cooking and hunting that I had to, of course, research. So that comes from personal, from people, comes from um, non-fiction books, it comes from historical archives, and then consulting with experts over and over again to make sure this was accurate. Sections of the book's book, oh, well, a whole third of the book is written like a dictionary, the Wiradjuri dictionary, um, with the Wiradjuri words and in my own fictionalised kind of dictionary. Um, it was incredible, and I mean that was the whole point of writing the book was to bring out this this language, to, to present a bilingual text without the reader even um, feeling, being aware of it or feeling bogged down by it or, or, or scared. So um, it was incredible to research Wiradjuri words to ask multiple sources to make sure um, it was correct spelling. So sometimes the dictionary differed from the WCC application which you can find for free online which is handy to read the book and go through the app as well because you can hear the pronunciation of the words or the audiobook has correct pronunciation too. So um, using the language was always going to be the central purpose of the book and of course it was really special to me. Um, the, the whole point of the book was to, f as, a, as a gift to my father who missed out on his language so it was about conveying that beauty and that how, how central language is to culture and country and family and that was um, yeah the whole point of the book. Um, so hopefully I pulled it off um, and hopefully that 
connected with readers, how special it was to me. Albert Gondawindi, Albert Poppy Gondawindi, is such a special character, I know, and readers have really connected with him, and I kind of wish, in reflection, that I'd written more of him, because, um, just because people like him. And actually, he was really easy to write, he was easier than uh, the two other strands, 100%, um, because a lot of it was like that internal voice, that deep... Um, thought that we have that I had inside me when I'd get into that meditative state to write a lot of those truths were just stuff that I think are truths and then of course the voice of Poppy is a mix of like my grandfather and my father as well so um, it was really yeah Poppy's a special character and then of course I had to put on as I said all these um, this factual information make Poppy seem like a really rounded character that knew these things um, intimately, these details about all time. So of course I had to, uh, had to be research because of, as you know, the Wiradjuri, the, the, the hundred year Wiradjuri wars, the Wiradjuri were touched deeply by colonisation and a lot of that information um, sadly ha has been lost. It was really important to tell the genocidal truths, um, to tell the, to explain the reasoning for the trauma that had, that had sort of been sung through this family. Um, so that's why it needed to be a story that was covering all time, the beginning of time and, and pre and post colonization. Um, it was painful to write that stuff but I think it's painful for any Indigenous author to write about their people um, and their country because, um, yeah, that's a reality. Um, it, it was difficult, but it was necessary. It's part, of, it's part of the story of Australia, and ultimately that's what I was trying to do is tell the story of Australia compressed into those um, 500 acres of land. Um, and and realised and sort of undergone by this one family. Um, so yes, of course, 100% it was difficult, but I wanted to write a book that almost like I carry, I was able to ca carry that burden and insert it into a story for the reader to, I wouldn't say enjoy, or but that they could, you know, read it at their own pace and take on this this truth and this this great information um, this great wealth of information so yeah it needed to be said of course um, I didn't want to shy away from the truth but it was a bit like Mary Poppins um, the spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down so that sugar was a cracking yarn and I knew it had to be a cracking yarn Balancing historical and contemporary timelines was about was a process of for me of how the novel would be laid out. That's part of that decade of, of struggling with this book. So um, oh, f first years ago, I think it was one narrator for sure, and then maybe it would have been two. And I mean, you go back and forth, writing in first person, writing in third person. Um, I mean, the different 
um, manifestations of the, this book, the different types of ways this novel was written. There's at least 20, 25. And this is the one that ultimately I settled on because I needed to tell a history and, you know, and a contemporary storyline and have it from the Gondawindi family and the, the white missionary needed to tell his side of the story too. Um, so three, I thought three narrative strands, that was um, enough for one book. It couldn't be more, I think it would be two packs and it couldn't be less because I needed to have have Poppy's story and then have his descendant story too. So it was really important to have August and to see that um, it was necessary. I think anyone that's read the book, book knows that any of those strands could not have not been there. There are themes of remembering and forgetting throughout the book for every character, for um, the Reverend, for August, and for Poppy. Um, if I was, if I if I was going to pinpoint the themes for myself, it would be about eternal love, it would be about truth telling, and it would be about remembering and forgetting. But I but I think they're really essential. I think that's what we really are essentially us humans. We are the dance between what we want to remember and what we are desperate to forget. And I think that's a primordial urge in fact. Um, I think it's a survival instinct. Um, so yes, those themes are there because I feel like they're some of the most potent universal themes and they speak to me as a writer. I wanted to write about those themes. I think I always have, and I think I always will in some way. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Um, all right, bye guys. Thanks for having me at your great festival read, and I hope this was helpful and informative, and love to all, stay safe.